Now you can run it fast at the beginning, and I know roughly the number of milliliters of base that I have to add to get to the end point with this titration because I did it before on camera. And it's a good idea, since you almost always do titrations multiple times, to go ahead and do the first one sort of fast and then not worry about what, what that data is. And then it'll save you the time because when you come back and do it again, you can do it more quickly. So in other words, I know that it's going to take roughly 35 milliliters to get to the um, end point of this titration. So I can go ahead and, and add close to that volume without even worrying about overshooting the endpoint. <coughs> OK, so I have now added the volume here is 29. So I've added 26 milliliters. So we have a ways to go yet. Let's go to 30. And you see that I'm swirling and rinsing down anything that might be clinging to the sides of the flask. If it splashes, and let's go right now. OK, now when the pink color starts to linger for a while, you know you're getting close. And what we're looking for at the end point is just the palest, palest, barely perceptible pink. And if I get this right, you'll be able to see what we're talking about. So what I'm doing now is just adding little bits of base. And swirling in between to make sure that that color is going to go away. And then when you get really close, one technique you, you can use is to just sort of take your uh, the stopcock and sort of give it a quick flip. And when you give it a quick flip, you introduce a really tiny amount of base to the reaction. Okay. And I can see that there's something stuck on the sides here, so let me rinse that down. That's good. So we're going to sneak up on it here. We should be getting really close. You can see that the pink color is starting to last a little bit longer when we swirl. Sometimes you do have to be a little bit patient with these. Now you can see that it's taking a long time to swirl away the color. OK, so that's it. That's actually probably even just a little bit past, but I only added the tiniest volume, um, just a, uh, maybe a 20th of a milliliter by flipping the knob. So that's a little bit past, but that's pretty good. And the final volume is 39.1, 39.1. Five. 39.15. Okay, and that's milliliters as well. All right, so now what do we know? Well, we know the initial volume of vinegar. We know the total volume of the sodium hydroxide we've added. So we know the number of moles of sodium hydroxide because we also know the concentration of sodium hydroxide that we've added. And so we know the number of moles of acetic acid we had in our original vinegar because we know um, the number of moles of sodium hydroxide we've added. And in the graphic, what you'll see is the 
uh, completion of this calculation to calculate the volume, uh, excuse me, calculate the concentration of acetic acid in our vinegar.